this is a button. When I click it, an alert box pops up. In vanilla JavaScript, there are three ways to achieve this interaction effect. First, we can directly add an on-click attribute to the button tag with its value set to the built-in JavaScript method alert. Clicking the button triggers the alert, which displays the alert box. But we can also achieve this by manipulating the DOM. This time, let's give the button an ID and I use the document get element by ID method to select the button. Then bind an onclick event to it. This allows us to assign an event handler function to the element. Note that this JavaScript code needs to be written inside a script tag. When we click the button, the event handler function is triggered. Lastly, let's give the button an ID again. And I use the document get element by ID method to select it. This time, or instead of using onclick, we use add event listener to attach the event, defining a callback function for the click event. When the event occurs, the callback function is executed. For these three approaches, in vanilla JavaScript projects, we typically use the two DOM manipulation methods. This is because manipulating the DOM separates the HTML structure from the JavaScript code, which decouples structure and behavior. However, in React, these two DOM manipulation methods are not appropriate. Although there are some way we can use to access the DOM in React, its declarative programming model encourages us to update the UI by modifying the state rather than manipulating the DOM. If we directly manipulate the DOM, it might conflict with React's virtual DOM update mechanism, leading to performance issues or inconsistent behavior. Therefore, in React, we mostly use the first method binding events to elements via attributes. Here, in this piece of JSX code of a React project, we have a button, and we add an onclick attribute with the value set to the built-in JavaScript method alert. To avoid conflicts with JavaScript keywords, React requires events to be named using camel case, so the letter C in onclick must be capitalized. Additionally, since JSX mixes HTML and JavaScript, the JavaScript portion needs to be wrapped in curly braces. Inside the curly braces, we don't pass a function call, but rather a function reference. Otherwise, the code will execute immediately. To prevent this, event handler is usually written as a callback function so that it is invoked only when the event is triggered. In real-world development, the event handler function might be quite long. To improve readability, we can define the function outside the element and then reference it inside the element. Again, remember, remember that this is a function reference, not a function call. Otherwise, the function will execute when the code loads, losing its intended purpose. However, this isn't always the case. There are scenarios where direct invocation is necessary, which we will discuss when we cover higher order functions later. For some elements, certain events have default behaviors. For example, consider a hyperlink that points to Google. Add a click event to this hyperlink. Clicking the hyperlink will trigger the event, display an alert box, and upon confirmation, navigate to Google. How can we prevent the default navigation behavior? Similar to native JavaScript, React events also pass an event object, 
we can define a parameter in the handler function to receive the event object. Then, use the prevent default method from the event object to cancel the default behavior. Now, when we click the button again, it will only trigger the event handler function we defined without executing the default behavior. Another issue to consider is event bubbling. For example, there's another button, but this time wrap it inside a div element. The div itself also has an onClick attribute. Clicking the div will trigger its onClick event as expected. However, if we click the button, it will first trigger the button's click event handler. After executing this handler, the event will bubble up to the parent element and trigger the parent's click event handler. To avoid this issue, we can call the stop propagation method on the event object inside the child elements handler. This method prevents event bubbling, stopping the event from propagating to the parent element. Now, when we click the button again, it will only trigger the event handler on the button itself. 